Welcome to Africa Media Australia. My name is Clyde Salomo Shradi, and uh, I have a guest uh, in the studio today, and I'm just going to give you an opportunity to introduce yourself. Uh, hi, I'm Nyado. It's good to be here. All right, Nyado, we're very happy to have you in the studio. Uh, how are you today? Very well, very well. Very All right. busy day, but very well. Busy as, as usual, you know. Uh, things, uh, it's sort of a very, li uh, very busy life uh, that uh, you have as a... I, I guess you study uh, law at university? Yeah, so I, I am second year law school and then I work two other extra jobs. Wow. Yeah, that's so, a, that's and yeah, it's, it's, it's full on, but I really enjoy this uh, studying law. It's, it's been such a wonderful opportunity and I really enjoy it. Okay, well, uh, you are South Sudanese um, and Australian from a South Sudanese background. Tell us a bit more about uh, yourself, how you, uh, you came to Australia and uh, mm -hmm. how you've you've been faring since? So I arrived in Australia in 2005 um, having been in Kakuma refugee camp for um, quite a long time and then um, but I was born in Ethiopia and um, and grew up in Kenya and yeah. you know got my citizenship uh, in Australia last year yeah. so I, I technically consider myself a bit of you know an Ethiopian Kenyan Sudanese Australian mix <laughs> you know, so, um, and it can get really confusing to, sometimes but I, I do feel like I belong to all those societies I think Absolutely, they've yeah. sort of inspired me in different ways and encouraged me to see myself in different ways and, and so yeah um, then after arriving in Australia in 205 I went to high school yeah. completed high school and then um, went to Victoria University and did a Bachelor of Arts Mm -hmm. And I finished that. Then I took a year off and then um, started uh, my JD program at Melbourne University. So um, and now I'm second year law. So it's been it's been a really interesting journey, especially because I've always wanted to, to study law and I've always wanted to be a lawyer. Yeah. And so you know, a dream that started a refugee camp is now you know I'm just realizing almost it. there, and almost there. Very hard though, very sleepless <laughs> nights. You know. <laughs> well, tell us a bit more about that. Is it is it very very challenging? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Law is very challenging, but I think I'll encourage anybody who wants to do it to, to study it because I think it's it just you just can see yourself developing. You know, um, you can see your thinking change. You can see your vocabulary change you know and I think that kind of transformation is really worth all the hard work mm -hmm. but it, it's definitely hard work you know you have to put in a lot of hours you have to study a lot um, it's a lot of reading it's um, you know expectation is very very high mm. you know, so mm. um, and, and you're, you're in a university that you know some really intelligent people are in there so it's also very very competitive mm -hmm. No, no, but at the same time, I think I would, yeah, I would encourage any young person out there who's interested in doing law to pursue it because I think it's really a worthy course. Whether you want to be a lawyer or not at the end, I mean, or even become a barrister or not, mm -hmm. I think it's still something that it's, it's worth doing. And I think in Sudanese community and, and African community, as we said in Australia, we believe to you know, start having lawyers and barristers because they will be much more informed about our background Absolutely. and the social issues that affect us mm -hmm. and how those social, social issues can translate into, into legal issues. So I think, um, yeah, I think even if it's for that, we probably need young more people to get in. But Absolutely. <laughs> well, that's good. And in fact, uh, mm -hmm. not so long ago, we did receive uh, in this studio, uh, Kurt Mona, who's also yeah. you know, who's a who's a lawyer from a Sudanese uh, South Sudanese background as well. Yeah. So pretty happy we're having you know we're starting to have uh, yeah we are getting, know, there. <laughs> getting, there. We are getting there and uh, you know we wouldn't complain having a lot more lawyers coming uh, oh, to, no. <laughs> in, in our community because we do need them, don't we? Yeah. All right, thanks very much for that. Now, um, I guess you're one of the most prominent young uh, African w w w uh, woman in. Um, sort of the community settings really? here in <laughs> Melbourne, as far as I know, uh, okay. uh, anyway. And uh, and you were even part of the OSUD um, uh, media course. Yes, uh, tell us a bit more about that. Um, so it involved uh, teaching young um, Sudanese people, uh, young people from South Sudanese background media skills. Mm -hmm. And I think that arises from uh, some of the challenges, of particularly the Sudanese community, and I think generally the African community have been experiencing with the negative media coverage. Yes. And so in order to be able to challenge that, um, it, the University of Melbourne and the Centre for Advanced Journalism thought it was necessary to have uh, young people from those particular backgrounds mm -hmm. um, to learn more about the media and how it works yes. so that they can be able to publish their own work yes. um, and, and you know maybe even sometimes challenge some of the opinions that are reported there. Yeah. Um, and some of it, uh, I, think, I think hopefully they were trying to get 
you know, by, by introducing mentors into the program because the program was part of teaching you the skills of, yes. of, you know, writing and editing and interviewing. Yes. But at the same time, you had a mentor who, who was a journalist and, yes. you know, was working for one of either ABC, SBS or... Um, Herald Sun Herald or Sun. ADH. And then as a result, I think it also introduced them to some of the challenges that are faced in the community. And I think that might inform their reporting okay. um, in, in, other, in other sense. So I think... I think that was generally the idea that they were trying to achieve. Uh, it's still an ongoing program, yes. and I know that they're now running, uh, I think, master programs now for much more advanced, yeah. um, skilled young people. Yeah. Um, I think my only criticism would be that it's still very South Sudanese focused, yes. and I think that we probably need it to be a bit more diverse and get more, you know, um, young people in that are not from South Sudanese background. That's right. Particularly because I think, you know, I, I don't think the media, I don't, I don't think anyone escaped when um, Sudanese are labeled as bad because I don't think the average Australian out there can differentiate between a Sudanese and a Ghanaian. No. Nah, so really, it's all, it's all <laughs> yeah, African. It's like, yeah, it's, it's just thinking <laughs> probably it would be a good idea. And I'm very sure. I mean. I, this this could be me jumping the gun, but I think I'm very you know people like uh, Michael Gwenda might might be interested in, in, in hearing such opinions. I think they're very open-minded people. Yeah, um, it'll be good if they open up a yeah. little bit so that uh, uh, other young people and other people with skills uh, from other communities mm. can actually benefit from that. Well, that's uh, another topic, and I'm sure. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm actually. Maybe trying you to, should invite Michael. I, I should invite Michael <laughs> and then and, email him. And, and have a chat, have a chat <laughs> yeah. with him. Oh, that's good. Which which brings us to one topic right now here in Victoria, Melbourne. Mm -hmm. um, not so long ago, I think it was early last week that there was yeah. a there was a publication in the media, uh, uh, in the Age, to be specific, uh, featuring um, a police uh, statement that appeared to kind of um, express their concern about. Uh, uh, so-called high offending rate from Sudanese and, and Somali background. And yeah. Somali background. Mm. What, 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 what's your take on that? Well, um, I think such reporting has, was highlighted by, you know, the race commissioner, um, Hel Helen Zoki recently. Yes. Is that it, first of all, it portrays the whole community um, as if those communities are, you know, criminal in a Crimin sense. Yes. And I think it also... Um, put an image in the mind of uh, people who might not be students, particularly white people, I mm -hmm. think, out there, yes. that there is something to be feared about these, these particular groups. Yes. And I think, looking at it from that perspective, I think the police um, did, did, like most media um, outlet, did a great disservice to, to Sudanese and the Somalian community. Mm -hmm. Particularly because I think that um, unless you really know um, the background story to the statistics, you would take them as they are. Mm -hmm. um, first of all, the first question anyone would ask is, out of those statistics, for example, how many were convictions, how many went through to the court mm -hmm. and were legally found that these kids actually have done any crime, mm -hmm. as opposed to just a police as thinking that someone has done a crime and, mm -hmm. and writing it down that they came in contact with the police and reporting that and becoming part of the statistics. You mm -hmm. know? So there's a lot of questions that um, the article itself does not adequately answer. Mm -hmm. And that leaves people with knowledge, with you know gaps in their knowledge that allow them to feel it with notions of race and sometimes discrimination. Yes. I think the other consequence that police don't realize that with such reporting, it's the community that suffer in yes. terms of jobs prospect. Yes. Which doesn't help their cause. Exactly. In saying that you know there is a huge um, because if they're of course we are not getting jobs, they're most likely going to end, end, end up in, in the streets and then uh, and doing in crime. Sense. But. but you know, it, it does affect. This, 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 these things are just not newspapers selling. They do affect people's life, you know, Absolutely. and how we perceive and how we are treated. And a lot of the time when such reporting occur, you know, it's, it's not rare to, to, to feel, um, to be exposed more to racism, you know, being called a nigger, yeah. or even to, you know, to, to, for Sydney's community to receive very threatening letters about, you know, this is what your community do is ungrateful refugees and things like that. Yes. Uh, I think the police truly, I mean, I don't think the police truly want to address this issue because, you know, I, I was among the people that was invited to the meeting to listen before the statistics were published. And if really the police wanted to engage beyond, you know, yeah, just merely putting a, a, a portrait there that they have engaged the community, if they want to meaningfully engage with the community, there should have been a much more thorough discussions about the statistics because they do affect people that are not themselves criminals. So, yeah, you can publish that there is a high rate of, 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 of crimes in Victoria, done by Sudanese and Somalis, but it affects people who are not doing crimes, mm -hmm. you know, people who are just living in their homes. And it's just such a negative portrayal of a whole society when I keep telling people that this, you know, 
South Sudanese or Somalis attending schools, working, is not the exception. You and know, I, I didn't I, attend the uh, meeting that you mentioned there. Yeah. What what was the police saying regarding why the, the statistics have to be released and why? They didn't just tell, they didn't tell us actually that the statistics have to be released, and I didn't even think that that they were going to be released. I think the the point that was emphasized by the people who were sitting on that table that they wanted to dis the police to be able to clearly clearly distinguish what what percentage of that led to convictions because that then tells us how many kids are actually doing crime because there's a lot of things we don't understand the first being that police have huge discretions mm -hmm. in terms of um, stop and search powers yes. you know these are discretions that are sometimes unregulated yes. you know the police can decide to, to stop someone because they have a, a suspicion mm -hmm. they can decide to take them in for questioning yeah. they can recall them how, how do we know that 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 just something that ended up being thrown out of court and mm -hmm. the court and court found there was no actually significant a uh, reason for the police to bring this, this matter to court. How yes. do we know that if they can't distinguish clearly yes. which one leads to convictions and which ones are just police interactions with the young people that are concerning? Mm. And I think that's what is concerning for me, not as, as well as the consequences that you know arise out of out of such reporting. And the other thing that also it, 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 it portrays to someone like myself is also you know this notion that we are consulting mm. when at the end of the day really nothing come out of that consultation yes it, i think at the end it's really insulting to community members you know what i mean like it's it almost as if it's just a, you know let's just meet and listen to what they say but it never is taken into account yeah and i'm beginning to find that not only with the, with the police return police but with a lot of service deliveries is that there is this ongoing constant consultations with the community which end up with nothing yeah and you don't you, you don't see the consequences of that interaction yeah. you know so it's, it's almost asking the question what's the point and maybe one last question on, on this topic. What, what do you think really is police motivation in bringing these figures uh, out uh, the way they did it? I, I, um, they I mean, I can I cannot speculate on what the police motivations were, and but but uh, you know, it, I I just can't because I really have no idea why. The, well, maybe I do. <laughs> maybe maybe I have an, an inclination as to why the police would do this. Yeah. My problem is I it's something I actually can't comment on particularly because. It's, it's part of my job, and part of my job is to keep some stuff, some of the things confidential that I can't discuss. Yes. Now that's, but, but that's just my own suspicion, you know. Yeah. It's, it's, it's on the other hand, just my own opinion of what I think, why the police did this, which is not, which is not really, I don't think it's really a sufficient reason <laughs> to, you know, maybe even saying it, it's, it's a risky, it's a risky business. So I, I don't really know what their motivation was. Um, uh, I think it would be useful if they, if they did. I think that police would argue that they're doing this because of public interest issues, public interest based issues that the public have an interest to know that these communities are involved and engaged at this rate with crimes. I personally don't think it serves any public interest um, because I think the only thing that it does, it just makes people more suspicious of themselves. Mm. It makes people more uh, afraid of each other. And I don't think that's a situation in, in which any community is really served. Mm. Uh, and there's also the argument, you know, when they say it's for public interest or for public benefits, which public? It's definitely not for the public benefit of South Sudanese and Tamalis. Yeah. So it might be definitely for public interest of a certain section of the community. Now, I don't know. I don't I don't really know what the Well, the, the, is. The, there are a lot of questions that uh, can mm. be asked about this. And, and, and I understand there's a lot of uh, concerns from uh, uh, many African uh, groups mm. uh, that... Uh, these things really uh, end up really hurting all Africans, oh, yeah. uh, oh, yeah. uh, rather than help the police in any way. It's it, it even counter um, very counterproductive. Uh, counterproductive yeah. in this way. But uh, we will rest this uh, topic uh, for now. Mm -hmm.